welcome everybody here today, the 4th of May <laughs> Council meeting. Um, and so firstly, are there any apologies? There being none, uh, we will not be having a public forum. Are there any items not on the agenda? There being none, are there any conflicts of interest? There being none. Oh, no, no, I just like to raise a matter. Um, is your honour, it's on your honour, so uh, Madam Four, going to um, be continuing to chair the uh, item on the response for the High Court declaration following the judicial review? I would have thought you should vacate the chair and let the Deputy Mayor run the aspect of the meeting. And why would that be? Well, well, you can't see that as a conflict of interest. I, I'm would you like happy. to explain it to me? So I will explain it. You, uh, you were a litigant in those proceedings. You filed an affidavit. You had made public statements. Clearly, you had no impartiality in regard to it. We have had people come around and tell councillors and community board members what conflict of interest is. And it seems to me that you don't understand what conflict of interest is. And if you actually consider you do not have a conflict of interest, I understand. So I, su I suggest you take some advice before we get to that part of the agenda. Thank you, Councillor Gottlieb. Are there any other comments? There being none, so we move on to the minutes for confirmation. So the first minutes are for the Coromandel Cold War Committee Board minutes. Do I have a mover? I'll move those. Move John, seconder. Terry, is there any discussion? There being none, all those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against, carried. Mercury Bay Community Board Minutes. I'll move. I'll Steve Murray. Do I have a seconder? Heidi. Is there any discussion? There being none, all those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against, carried. To Tyro Paranoid Community Board Minutes. So move. Move Terry. Seconder. I'll move. Seconder John. Sorry. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against, carried. Thames Community Board Minutes. Move Sally, seconded Robin. Is there any discussion? There being none. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against, carried. From the town Community Board Minutes, move up. So moved. Terry, seconded. Gary, any discussion? There being none. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against, carried. We'll have a shoreline management committee minutes. Do I have a mover? I'll move. Move Tony, seconder, Robin. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favour, please say aye. 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 Yes, carried. Thames, Coromandel District Council minutes. Do I have a mover? Move. Do I oh, second uh, Martin? Is there any discussion? Um, I don't, I'm not a citizen of apology, except that the resolve to receive my apology. Right, sorry, okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, no further discussion. There being none. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against, carried. So now moving on to the green, page 61, the greenhouse production plan. I've got two different agendas here. So, okay, there is a. I don't know if Sally wants to make any comment in particular, Sally? Um, well, just to say that this is a summary of where things have got to with the working party, um, the work that's been done, and gives you an outline of the work that's coming up in terms of developing a corporate carbon roadmap. And the next meeting of the working group is later this month. Excellent. Any further discussion? Martin. I know this group gets referred to by a number of different names. Can, I know it might sound pedantic, but can we actually set on an actual proper name for it? By all means. It just <laughs> that sometimes we, we talk about being the greenhouse gas reduction um, group. Now, now, now it's got greenhouse gas reduction plan working group. I mean, I just think it would be helpful if we actually knew what it was called so that because I think it's the first time I've seen the word plan come into it. But is, it is it a group that's making a plan? I seem to recall that I used the words that were from the resolution but I might have got it wrong. 
So I'm, I'm totally relaxed about you changing it to whatever you want it to do. Some would say that it should be a carbon reduction working group rather than a greenhouse gas reduction. Energy and carbon reduction. So perhaps the greenhouse suggestion that you discuss this actual next meeting and make a recommendation of the council if you think that's a better option. Okay. Um, and so there was one other point. Um, in attachment C, is the WS Energy and Carbon Management Program FY20. Um, I was very encouraged to see in there under energy efficiency and cost measures that says TCDC are investigating a solar powered array at the council office in Thames and have looked into the viability of. Solar systems at various water plants, investigations into the electric vehicle and charging around the way. So um, I'm very excited about that and uh, looking forward to progressing that. So, Martin, what's your point, please? No, no, I'm just saying I'm um, happy to see that in there. Right. Uh, do I have a mover? Oh, can I have another question? So, we're, the suggested resolution is to receive the report, but then there's nothing in there about going further and I know that we've had a resolution to allocate funding to this working group but I don't know maybe Sally you're the right person to say is there a resolution that says we will be doing a greenhouse gas reduction plan? Well the work that's been done so far has given you the baseline for current emissions at both the council level and the community level yes. and these, this carbon, corporate carbon roadmap will be talking about initiatives that you can undertake to reduce yeah. the emissions from that baseline. Do we have a resolution anywhere that actually says we're going to do a reduction plan? The resolutions are um, a roadmap. Page 63 says it talks about the next steps that the working group recommended. Yeah. No, I'm aware of that. I went to all the meetings, but I'm just asking if we have actually have a resolution at a council meeting that says that we're going to do a carbon reduction roadmap. No, you don't. You had, a, you had a resolution to establish the working group to formulate a greenhouse gas emission reduction plan. Yes. So that. Is that sufficient? I think it is, because okay. the purpose of the working group is to formulate that reduction plan. Yeah. yeah. So that could be another issue for the agenda for the next meeting is what they're actually going to bring back to formalise that. Yeah. Is, is this the well, point? Now, yeah. Okay. Um, we'll we'll look at that and the meeting being raised and see what that means. Um, but I think Stella's probably quite right um, in saying that. Yeah, that's it's going to go that. Yeah, so that's all good. Okay, we'll look at that one. Any other matters to be raised? If, do I have a mover? I could. Tony, Martin. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Yes. <laughs> Carried. Um, discrimination to vote standards of campaign on private public final, page 67. And how Good morning, everybody. Um, with the chair, I will take the report as read and then have a discussion around our options and what we're going to do to proceed. Thank you, Laurie. My problem is me. Um, so, um, I'm just a little nervous about this one because um, we obviously introduced it for good reason and if my memory serves me correctly, there was a lot of, a lot of additional people camping on private property and it was causing disruption. It was quite um, extensive. And of course, we are a district where people really love to camp and take up every space. So we're talking about, oh, sorry, I'm interrupting. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, we're talking about space within private property, i.e., yeah. somebody's home, yeah. Yeah. and they invite 30 um, family members to come. But, and just to follow on and interrupt you, so this doesn't cover the rule. No, it's own rural government, so this is within yeah. towns and settlements. Yeah, correct. Largely, but um, yeah, I'm a bit 
bit concerned that there's, it hasn't been used, so my understanding is that it's never been invoked. Is that right? That's right. Though, though it is a tool in the toolbox for enforcement officers for um, any disturbance or yep. the like. That's right. Yep. So it is used as a tool for that. Um, the the issues that were occurring back pre-2015 um, have significantly dropped off. There is hardly any effort two a year over the last, but, um, since 2015. Um, the officers do use this as a tool, but there are other tools that we're suggesting that can be used as well. And, um, and so those other tools are? The, the Health Act. And how effective is that? I have an enforcer in the health act, but I'm not, Brian Taylor can um, can talk more on that tool. I just don't want to sort of get us in a position where we revoke the bylaw or have an unintended but that's right. as a result. It's just because we haven't used it. Though. Yeah, and, and that's sometimes it's a reason. a useful um, tool, so that's where I'm at too. Yeah. So from an important perspective, I'd say that um, we we. At a higher threshold when this bylaw would be trying to fix a problem for us, we would be able to use the nuisances in the health act. Um, but that benchmark is a little bit higher than the bylaw. It would, we have to establish that's injurious or offensive to health. Um, so this bylaw maybe protects for some lower risk general nuisance. Uh, but again, we'd have to prosecute under this bylaw. There's no infringement regime. So you'd basically have to identify a problem. It'd have to be so sustainable that we would want to take that to court. Um, and it would be an offence against the bylaw. From looking at, uh, we haven't, I haven't used the bylaw personally in the years that I've been here. And the main appendix is one toilet to 12 people. So we're talking about uh, when more than 12 people are camping on a property and there's a general nuisance that would be caused that's around wanting more toilets and whether we would ever take a prosecution for that. Uh, and I'd say it's Move on. fairly unlikely. You've got the other tools, I can't see the point of having it there, but honestly. John? I, um, I've, I've seen us tidying up a lot of bylaws recently, and there's good reasons why we do that. I mean, absolutely. This one here, I, I do have some concerns about removing for every reason you mentioned. Um, it is a lower threshold, you were saying, than the Health Act and others. Sometimes it's sufficient just to walk up to a property where obviously we've been called because there's concerns from neighbours. We haven't gone there for no reason, so there is a problem happening. And when we're asked under what act we are actually looking at it, I think it's just nice to be able to say, we have this vital awareness of what's going to happen, rather than trying to reach up to the Health Act, which is, as you say, another step to above. Um, there would have been a reason why we actually brought this bylaw about in the first place. And it could be by the very fact that it exists and people are aware that it exists that we don't get the problems we're having. I actually myself would like to see it change. So. Okay, Terry? Yeah, I, I don't. It's, it's, this goes back to the one toilet for 12 people. We had so, so much drama about walking around people's playground and uh, camping over Christmas and deciding who was living there and who wasn't there how many toilets are in the house. Now houses have four or five toilets in them. So what do you have, you know, 70, 80 people out there. So I think it was, the, it was there for that reason. I just don't see the need for it now. You've got other tools in the toolbox that are far more adequate to deal with excessive camping on urban areas. I, I recall it was actually an issue um, in the Mercury Bay area. Yeah. Tony. Uh, yes, yeah, so I, I hear what uh, Terry said, but for a lot of those things that we have, they are Cottages built in the 1970s yep. Yep. on a quarter acre or a bigger section. And that's what happened with one house. toilet. And the family get together and ends up with 10 tents and the caravans. And one toilet. So I don't have any issue with that. It's just that if someone complains about the noise or access or whatever, at least there's a tool that we can go and deal with it. I don't think anyone's suggesting we're going to go around and see how many people are on the sector and you've got 13, so one of you has to go. Yes. So for me, I'm a bit in your camp, John, and that is um, we may not use it, but it's a useful tool to have in the drawer if you need it. So can I ask just a technical question of how much staff time and is cost put to review and continue without amendment the standards for? So if we were to keep it, we would need to 
put it out to be for consultation without necessarily changing it because, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that's touched on the next point of raise. Right? So staff aren't. Um, we're making a recommendation that this is a bottle that we don't use and we're tidying it up. We certainly don't mind if it, uh, the decision is to go out to renew it. It's coming up to a period of needing to be reviewed. Um, I would imagine that the cost will be fairly similar for um, either con consulting on revoking it or consulting on renewing it as it currently is. Um, if you would prefer to keep that in your toolbox, that's fine. Our recommendation is we're not using it. That was just the fact to bring it here. We don't want to it yeah, um, if we did go out for public consultation on that, we'd incorporate it with something else to make sure that that spreads across. Yeah, if it, if it not fits within the time frames this is required before it lapses, it's due to lapse at the end of this year. So we need to make sure. So we've got the rest of the year to include yeah. it with something else. Yeah, so as long as something reduces the that. cost for consultation. Can I just point more through? Yeah, just yeah. a point of clarification around noise that Tony raised. You've got other options in dealing with noise, haven't you? We wouldn't use this file often. No. Uh, okay. yeah. But I, if, if my memory serves me correctly, it has been used for um, caravans parked too close to a boundary or different things like that. that no, we wouldn't, we wouldn't use that. For that either, so you potentially wouldn't, unless of course there's lots of people on the site and you were incentivising them with the, the relocation. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the example we would use this for would be if we had the place from neighbours that there was general users coming from a large amount of people camping on the property, um, we would go and assess that. And one of the tools we might use to limit the amount of people would be this this bylaw. But if it was related to noise, we would deal with that under the RMA. If it was um, dealt with in terms of a health issue coming from that, we probably would use the Health Act anyway, um, rather than the spiral. So it would just be general nuisance about the number of people. All right, okay. So, that, can that I move that and test the intestine meeting? I move that we um, adopt the revoking of So, you're going to, as I said, determine to repeat and continue with the materials, not the rest of it. So, you're, you're moving. Um, to number four. four. You at number four? Four and five, yeah. Four and five. Do you have a time? I've just got one question for uh, Brian and your team. So if we revoke, if we agree to revoke this, are you comfortable that we have sufficient tools to deal with the issues that this was brought in the first place? Um, without this, can you run the operation? Yeah, without having seen it being used in the last four years, okay. um, I would say that if, if the tool wasn't available, we would still go and have the conversation, and we would hope that through our conversation, we would be able to get the same outcome anyway, but that means we threaten the bylaw. However, there is a small risk that something doesn't meet the threshold definition, they don't want to listen to us, and um, we wouldn't have that tool available. But um, but you wouldn't have the immediate ability to enforce. We wouldn't have an immediate ability to enforce under this bylaw anyway. We would have to prosecute. Right. Okay. Yes. And that's a key difference key. because a lot of time, fortnights happen, but Yeah. Okay. Um, look, the simple fact is, if a problem develops, you can be addressed the matter, uh, and we assess what the tools might be needed to support staff as they do their job. Yeah. So you can always come back to it. So that's... Okay, so we're looking at uh, number one and four and five. And Terry is moving those three. Do I have a seconder? Yeah, seconder Tony, any further discussion? There being none, all those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Yes, Terry. Aye, one against. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't vote for it either. Yeah, you didn't vote for it I've got three that didn't vote for it. If you get the carry, you've got a tool box carry. and you go on. Yeah, you so we're now on to item point three, and uh, we have Sally. Well, I, I did raise this at the beginning, and I just looked at you to our standing order. Our standing order is 20.7, but more particularly 20.8, and the Auditor General's report on conflicts of interest. 
date of delivery from May 2019, uh, the first bias uh, it talks about how local bodies should deal with this, and uh, I suggest that the rules of the general report be looked at because if you are saying you should be chairing this, I am God's man. Thank you very much, Derek. Stanley, are there any measures? Are you ignoring? I, I'd like a word. I'd like to say some words as well. Thank you, Derek. I just think I agree with Derek. I think from as far as transparency in the meeting, we were going, there wouldn't be much to set aside and let uh, Murray stack the seat and let it be heard. So I, I agree with this because it does look biased to me. So, okay. And, and you just set aside, it can still be part of the meeting. But you're so, saying it's biased because? Because you've shown you have a conflict all the way through this. You What's have, the conflict, is Jerry? Well, it's stated in the judgments, and you, read, you, you didn't have a day for it. Is that what you wrote? What's right stated in the judgment, Jerry? Sorry? What's stated in the judgment? You've stated all the way through that you don't want to sign this. It's been a clear right through the whole discussion. I and I just think for transparency sake, I you should step aside. I haven't said that, Terry. I, I'd just like to should say, um, yeah, thank you, thank you, really appreciate it. I'd just like to say that at a meeting here, at this very table, I did ask the mayor if she would not sign it. She said she probably wouldn't. She didn't say she definitely wouldn't. She said she probably wouldn't. But that's, that's still so. She's got an open mind, okay? She didn't say no to it. Thank you, Mate, for my part, I see a bit different. I see this is us sitting in here providing the mayor with a direction, yep. which the mayor may or may not take. So it doesn't matter what we actually all think is where we want to go. This is like every, not every, the majority of other councils in New Zealand where the mayor signed that unilaterally without talking to anybody. We have the um, luxury, maybe, of having it come to us to think what we wanted. And at that time, the people sitting around this table agreed not to sign it, and it wasn't signed. Yep. So at the end of the day, if there's eight councillors recommend that the mayor signs it, and the mayor says, I'm not signing it, then it um, makes no difference what the outcome is. So for me, this exercise is going through the motions. Um, and probably need not be here because the mayor can sign this or not sign it as uh, the mayor chooses fit. So I don't see a conflict myself, that's all I just said. I don't think that's correct. Um, sorry, I've got to the mind. Because I'm in a situation where I was with one of the people that voted that the mayor sign it and no one's discussing with me whether I have a conflict of interest because back in 2019, I'm the only one in this room that voted differently to the mayor. So have what what's yours? So that's why I think that um, if we're talking conflict of interest, potentially I have one as well. I don't believe I have. And um, I think that we are going to vote as nine people and um, the chairing can stay as it is. That's what I personally think. <coughs> Yeah. I think we've all shown we we when we voted originally on this. So any conflict we could all be pointed in having a career interest. That's why I see it. And I see it that I'm in Tony's camp that this is it's the mayor's prerogative to sign it or not. We can only really make a recommendation. Most councils didn't do that in New Zealand. Most councils as their neighbouring council did just went and signed it. And, and I think we've got to leave it to the mayor to sign it. And I think we can debate it, we can make a recommendation, and away we go. Barton, is it, would it be more accurate, Gary, to call it a predetermination rather than a conflict of interest? Yes, well, this is what the Auditor's General Office talks about, and that's why I'm surprised that you haven't taken some advice on this. Okay. So, what happened, just to reiterate, just to sort of recap, this was a declaration for the mayor's to sign the law, that this wasn't a requirement to go back to council. But I, in good faith, could not do anything along that line without bringing it back to council. 
And so, um, and I raised this with council, discussed it with council, and at that point then it was Sally that moved the first motion to put this actually on the council agenda for a decision. At that point, the council made a decision, and then following that, a judicial review was given. So that was a, a consequence that none of us have ever envisioned. So, uh, and matters have been skewed to this point. And so it now is up to the council again to make a decision in line with the options that have been put forward on the agenda um, through all of the action that's been taken in response to the, to the judgment made. So it's now up to councillors, and I appreciate what Sally said. So we will continue. Um, and there was a workshop where I understood that a consensus had generally been reached. Um, but people seem to have come to a landing place through discussion without my presence. And, um, you know, I'm happy for whatever decisions this council makes. It's entire, you know, I will, you know, that's, that's the decision. I'll be happy with that. It just, I'll go along with that. It's fine. So, I think if you, you need to clarify that actually you're not making a decision today. No, no, no. Couple of hours you are making a decision on your preferred option. Yes. Yes. And then you're going to go out and consult yes. on yes. the four options, identifying what your preferred option is, receiving public feedback, considering that feedback, and then making your decision exactly. at a separate yes. meeting. Yeah. So um, just be really clear, you are not making a decision today. You're identifying your preferred option of the four or more of, if, and I understand Councillor Rodley has an alternative that he wants to put up. So maybe five options that you're considering. Um, and, but all you're doing is identifying your, pre your preference. That's right. And then go to public consultation. And that was part of the judgment through the chair, wasn't it, to do this? And and the, the, the goalposts have moved since that discussion back then with the government moving forward in this process going forward. So it seems to be more about these things are going to happen, not going to be discussed. So this is a, an opportunity for to hear the people's views around the table, which were different, I think, from last time when we sat around the table with this. But it's really clear that the mayor is not obliged to sign no, even if you pass Correct. a resolution. Correct. Yeah. But we can. In the judgment, we were asked to make a decision for the mayor to sign or not. And then she can decide whether she doesn't. I don't know if you're correct on that. I've taken some advice from New Zealand, the leading expert on this, and you're quite wrong. Bankrupt on legal advice, Tony. Might as well, maybe a question to you. And those who weren't at the workshop, that yeah. Stephen Franks uh, presented that. So, did, there were those who weren't here, which was like Terry and Gary and, and Sally. Did you dial on and hear what Stephen Franks offers? I was biking down the South Island, so, yeah. so the answer is no. Yeah. So that was quite enlightening. Yeah. Um, and there were a number of questions that were directed back to uh, him. And uh, I'm not too sure, it must be a, uh, someone else in his office who, who didn't have much to say. But uh, so for me, I was very, very clear after I heard Stephen Franks's. Um, opinion and to where we go to from there. So 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 we're going out for public consultation, that's yeah. a given. Yeah. What so the thing is what do we get public consultation on? That's the discussion yeah. here with Sally yeah. quite right pointed out. So there were some options put up. Martin has come up with a, another option uh, which has only been emailed to the councillors yeah. uh, in recent days. So I only saw it yes, late yesterday. I got to um, is anyone going to put that option up to the movie? Yep, we can share it yeah. on the screen. We're going to move in a second for it, haven't we? Uh, no, no, not, not yet. We haven't. Yeah, I moved by Martin and I seconded. So, could you still have a way of doing it? Option five is fine. Sorry, I should have Terry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, can I just briefly, uh, initially, I had suggested that. Option two be um, changed to option five, but then the um, I received some advice from the government from the report writer that it would be better to have it as a separate uh, a separate option. Okay, so the option five, the new option that Martin wants to propose is is that council agrees with the 
guiding principles and actions in the decision. In the in declaration. The declaration. Uh, sorry, the de declaration and approves the mayor signing the declaration and continues with council's uh, current. current climate change commitments and work program, including the work of the TCDC Greenhouse Gas Working Group. So, Martin, what are the guiding principles, please? Seven. So, um, when we've been talking about whether um, the mayor would sign this or not, um, I think it's very important to note that this declaration came out of a meeting of LGNZ in 2017, and the primary objective of it was to um, demonstrate to central government that um, local government wanted action on it. And I'm not saying it's, um, game, it's game over or that it's been, all the things in there have been completely met. But when you consider now in the four years since then, um, we have had a climate emergency declared, we've had um, a Carbon Zero Act put in, we've had central, central government indicated government departments that they need to um, be looking to be Carbon Zero by 2025. Um, I just feel we've moved on so much that we seem to be worried about what the signing this declaration might mean to us. But in fact, we really should be looking at um, what legislation is in place that um, is going to have an impact on us. So I wanted the opportunity of councillors to be able to say they support the declaration and then as has been pointed out, if the mayor chooses not to sign, I like to feel that I've got something in there to say that um, five or six or seven or eight people agree with the principles and actions of the declaration, even if the mayor doesn't sign it. And Thank I also you. want the second bit just to say that um, to have a central reference point to, so people can say, yes, this is the work we're doing and it's in the greenhouse gas working group. What are the guiding principles, Martin? Well, there's um, <laughs> seven of them. Can yeah. just help them through? Yeah. Precaution, stewardess, equity, anticipation, understanding, cooperation, resilience. They are the seven guiding principles. Right. What are the actions then, Terry? Well, I have the got the actions here, but these are the actions. Would you like to read out? Government. So, our part. So, are you reading from the declaration? Yep. The actions yep. required yep. in the declaration? Yep. Right. We commit to develop and implement ambitious action plans that reduce greenhouse gas emissions and support resilience within our own councils and the local community. These plans will promote walking, cycling, public transport and other low carbon transport options. Work to improve the resource efficiency and health of homes, businesses and infrastructure in our district and support the use of renewable energy and uptake of electric vehicles. Okay, can I just stop there? So, can we have those words. So if you're going to have um, this option about supporting the guiding principles and actions, we really need to have those specified so we know what we're signing up to. They're in the report. As a they're, in, they're in attachment A. Yeah, well, they're, they're an excerpt from the declaration, are they? Yeah. So if they're an actual excerpt from the declaration, um, we still have, need to have those identified out because you're making a generalist statement which needs to be supported by a very clear understanding of what those explicitly are. Like I say, it's on page 84, it's in the comprehensive report. I don't understand which, why. Which is fine. Sally, have you checked that against the actual wording in the declaration? If you look at section 2.4, I'm sorry I haven't got your page numbers in your agenda, but section 2.4 of the report identifies the commitments in the declaration and gives examples of the work that we are already doing um, against each of those commitments. So, can I just reiterate this again? The reason why I'm not saying this is because my concern when I raised it initially was the word commitment. And so it says we will commit. So that's, that's it's still a potentially binding document the Harrogate Climate Action Group consider it to be binding, and the judge said yes, it's potentially binding. So I'm just wanting to reiterate that again. With, with respect, further on in this comprehensive report, we've got the table 
saying the actions that we've done but un work underway already completed by council, including the um, setting up the EV charging infrastructure, which I happened to use the other day, and I'm very grateful that I was able to. So, in a way, we're saying, here's an example of all the work we're doing on this, but at the same time, you're turning around and saying, well, we don't want to be bound to be doing work, work which we're already doing. It, it just seems like, well, <laughs> No, there's Sorry, John. It's okay. I'm just pointing it yeah, out. No, what, whatever you want to say, just. I think it's. I think it's a shame we've actually got option five here because we let that workshop pretty happy okay. and with and with a course, okay? okay? And I don't want to see us get split now. And I do. I want actually. I want the mayor to approve, okay? I really do. But I don't want the mayor to approve something that we commit to. Are we Absolutely. I'm not. No, 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 no. It's got to have somewhere in there non binding mark for me to even come near there. But what's the point in signing? Because it's our good intentions. We have good intentions, but we cannot throw ourselves into a financial black hole yeah. with something that we don't know. We don't even know where the bottom is for that. I don't want us with our hands coming on our back, Mark. I really want the words non binding there. You were, I think we're getting two distinct yeah. arguments here confused. Okay. One is climate change. And climate change is one uh, one side, of it, and we can all have our views on climate change. To me, this is a completely separate issue, and that this is committing, we think, we don't know, and even a high court judge has not been definitive. But if, it, if, if we commit, and it hasn't been tested in the High Court for nothing, believe you me, it hasn't been tested in the High Court for nothing, if we sign up to this, and it is binding, as Martin says, then we are committing this council to unknown financial liability. I believe that. Now, if we go through all our annual plans, all our budgets, we do everything. So we've only got 29,000 rate payers. And I look at some of the aspirations, and it is legally binding, and if we get directed, then we as councillors may as well go home. Because I think we are we are here to determine the financial viability of this council. So I am not going to sign up for anything where we're not in control of where this council is going financially with its budgets and all the rest of it. So I accept the climate change argument, and I accept it's there, and I accept that people are passionate about climate change. And that's if we've got to do something about climate change. But it also cannot, on the other side, say we're going to find up, sign up to the unknown, because I, as a councillor, can't do that. Tony, and then Robert. Uh, so, mine was very extensive, but most of So, listening to Stephen Franks, quite clear that this is a non statutory document that could be binding. Mm. And with that, there are no money around or no nothing. And so, my own position has been. Will sign nothing for this council that involves a cost that I don't know about. Absolutely. So I do agree that I'm not going to be able to support directing the mayor to sign it, but I am going to be supporting the option that we carry on and give cognizance to the issues that are in this report and that Stephen Franks spoke about um, at length. So, yes, I agree, we need to carry on doing what we're doing, but I am not uh, myself going to uh, be saying that let you sign it. Um, it's already the yes, prerogative to sign or not sign it, and um, uh, that'll be my position. So, I have two little things to drop into the conversation. The first is we're actually making this as about a preferred option, and this could we could go out with any of those options and have. Yeah. 29,000 rate payers tell us that we're wrong. Yep. The second thing to be really mindful of is that the only time the declaration has been in the High Court has been with us. So 60 other, 67 other councils have signed this and have not faced any burden related to it. And I've been talking with my networks and the Young Elected Members Network and mostly they have said that signing the declaration was a symbolic action. But the things that they were doing for council anyway, which in our case listed in Count at page 94 in the table have not been over and above what they were doing anyway. So, yes. You just said the signing is a symbolic action. And that's what I think a lot of people think they were doing. If it was a symbolic action, it wouldn't be subject to a high court review. 
It was something to high court with you because the council process. didn't just follow appropriate process. That's what well, the other council was joining me just went and signed it. Didn't no, sorry, it. I, I do object to this that you're saying all the other mayors just signed it without even reading it. A lot of councils did discuss it. And so a lot of councils didn't discuss it either. What's that? A lot of councils didn't discuss it. Well, Majority. The majority, I understand, didn't discuss it. And the majority of them have not been in court because they signed a document that has been legally binding. The, what, sorry? the majority of councils have not been taken to court by their ratepayers. Well, and so they didn't know. That's right. Look, <laughs> yeah, I, we have to give effect to the legislation, like it or not. Murray. So thinking that you're not going to sign something and the government's going to tell us what they're doing and you're not going to do anything is rubbish. We have to give effect to it. When you know the Climate Change Commission is going to be making recommendations to government and they will flow down through the system. So we're mucking around with something that you just want to put completely. No, I got the point that you want to sign this because you don't want to get into money that you don't know you're going to have to spend. But you'll be told to get the money you're going to have. Absolutely, that's right. Absolutely. Right. When we get there and we get the money, I'm happy for that. Don't worry about it. Just sign this thing and move on. All this is just costing us money. It's cost us 100 grand already, and we're going nowhere. So let's move on and get it done. That because it means nothing to you. That, that 100 grand that it's cost us has been the instigation of, of um, the sector of, of the public. And they won't. They haven't agreed to them. So they won't make cost so they won't. They won't. They won't. We so can't stop the members of the public doing that. Sorry, Sal. So I'm thinking about option two and option five on my brain. Yep. And I'm separating the climate declaration, which to me is a legal court process now, from the resolution that we made before, which was 2.1 around our commitment to our greenhouse gases reduction plan. So for me, um, reading the room, um, I don't know if people are saying option one. I'm option one or option four. I lead to option four. Right. Um, so where I am at now, I think we could go around this table endlessly debating the issues. Um, to me, option five, we sort of covered, not the declaration part, but the work that we covered in 2.1. So um, that's just something to put on the table, the relevance of the resolution we've already passed and the commitment to that um, committee and its ongoing work, because that's actually what this is trying to do at the same time as um, respond to a court process. Can I make a suggestion in response to Martin? <coughs> Martin, if if um, if going down, you're looking at option two. Mm -hmm. So option two and add, you could add here in recognition of what you've raised. Council approves the ESI grant. <coughs> Council's current climate change permits a work program as identified in the climate change declaration. <laughs> or in, a, in accordance <laughs> but, but what's it, what that does it make reference reference to the fact that, that it's cognizant of the declaration and the work program within it mm. or you can actually say that cognizant of the declaration it's just a it's, it's words but it's still, it's still a recognition of the declaration on the part of the council. Mm, I'm, I'm not sure. That might just, that just seems to me a little bit more money in the water. I don't know. <coughs> I, don't, I don't know. What you're okay, so, if I can just get back to you on, on the fact that this is almost a moot point because if you go out with Sally's suggestion, this is just indicating what we're going out for public consultation on. If you get something out there, it's then up to you to make a decision on whatever else comes back. So you've yet to make a final deliberation on what comes back as a result of consultation. Yes. So you don't need to get necessarily too hung up on it right now because there'll be a further um, ultimate 
deliberation at the end of consultation. Yeah. Can I just throw another rabbit in the paper? Yeah. <laughs> are we missing an opportunity? We're constantly talking about consultation being quite expensive. And at the moment, we have got a few national figures about what the general public think about climate change. And we've got, um, and you know, so the submissions here in PAC, we've got something that somebody else did about our ratepayers and their effect, their thinking on climate change. We don't want to muddy the waters because what we're consulting on is how do you feel about the council in this particular decision. But are we missing an opportunity by only asking them what they think about this one issue? when we're already spending the money. Should we not expand the consultation to say, what do you think about our production plan or whatever else we decide to, to put in that? I'm just wondering if we're wasting... Because the primary, question, question, we, we, the, primary the primary question is, should we, at this point, also extend the consultation that we're already doing, that we're committing to in Resolution 5, uh, 3, sorry, to ask broader questions of our ratepayers about what they consider we should do. But what are their opinions? What are their thoughts? So basically changing it from a purely compliance focused consultation exercise into meaningful engagement with the community. Yes, what you said. What I said. <laughs> because we have to answer the judge's primary question in the first instance, yeah. which yeah. has done the significant yeah. engagement with policy. Yeah. So, we, you know, earlier on we were talking about the um, camping bylaw and you said, well, can we combine that with other consultation? So I'm wondering, is there another conversation that we can combine with this one? This, this, that just means, that just means in terms of publicly advertising and holding meetings on the same days or... Yeah. Okay. Out, but. And I know that in this, when we've had conversations, we have at times been confused, as Murray said, with the difference between the declaration and the difference between that and climate change. But inevitably, every time we talk about this in public, we're going to get the bigger, broader climate change question anyway. So it's really, do we kind of cut that off at the head and say, no, I'm sorry, we're not talking about that today, or do we just embrace it and say, well, people are going to come and ask us about climate change, people are going to have opinions, let's just... Because we're answering um, a judge's directive and yes. in a tight legal parameter, and so... Um, I, I just think that yeah. we, we need to focus on what we need to do for this now as a council, whatever the decision the majority of you make. I, I find it hard to imagine the judge would have an issue with us um, asking for meaningful engagement with the community around um, some sort of action plan. He, does, he makes, judge makes absolutely no mention of not being able to do that. Yeah. He wants consultation. Yeah, he wants consultation. I think we're going to get it whether we want it or not. People are going to yes. talk to us. When we go out and um, just looking for where we say that we're going to communication channels, paid channels, media coverage, I, all of us personally, we're going to get asked more questions. So, no. The consultation in this instance is confined. Well, well the, the judge will deal with that issue. Yeah. So the judge has said you have that shall not? Uh -huh. It was so very the, unclear soon from the judge as we found yeah, Mr. Frank. So we're going to do, we should be doing what we've been told to do, go out and consult on this. And then take from there. So, so, so just but the to, whole take it from there. It's just delaying it further. We've been yeah. So it's so just yes. since the declaration. It's just sorry, sorry, it's not. Right. It's actually going back to the for uh, for their feedback on it. So to preempt as a matter of significance. When when we get submissions back on this and people say option whatever, and also do we? And you should also do this. And my opinion is also that. Do we just ignore that? No, you take it into account. Yeah. So yeah. why not? <laughs> we're we're the I'm sorry, but that's. So, I mean, your your comment that this is a strict that we're doing this consultation is a strict, clearly defined, very limited um, consultation. Um, I I completely disagree with but that. It's limited to the judge's directive. Where? 
It's not constricted. It's, it's not restricted. It's talking consultation. But you need to answer the judge's directive. I, I, I agree with that, and the judge is not going to be concerned in the side yeah. of the We can't the judge is going to think. Do we need to... We need to move on, because it's getting a bit... I think I'm going to do the ...being run by some. So what is the decision on the option? So we have a mover for option five. And I'll second it. Which is Martin, and seconded by Terry. Are you still going with that option? Yep, so to, to, to put option five... In the list of five, in the list of options, is that what we're asking? As you put that, that's the option we're going one. Yeah, yeah. one. I, I think you need to do it in two stages. Yeah, yeah. You need to resolve whether or not you accept option five as an additional option, yes or no, and then if it's yes, then you get to identify which of the five options is your preferred option. Okay, so, 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 so it's appropriate for me to move that option five be included in the list of options. Yes. Yep, that's fine. Let's move Martin, seconded. Yeah, okay. Terry. Yep. All those in favour? Yes, they are. Aye. 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 Against? Aye. Aye. So, how many was it? One, two, three. I'm against that. Well, because there are no papers referring to it. Well, it doesn't really prevent it from being an option. <laughs> As a consideration for public consultation, but it's a bit of a but there's no clear direction of that what that means. So I'm, I'm presuming that, that if you do go with option five as the final option for public consultation, you will have a will have to approve that paper before it goes out, won't it? There will, well, there would need to be a lot of explanatory material that goes That's out right. with the consultation. Yeah. Okay, so we, then we put the option five. Regardless. Yeah. Yes. So regardless. Yeah. All right, so, so that's, that was carried. So the next re resolution is which option? So we've got, yeah. I'd like to move if we can. The third option, test the waters. I'd like to test the Okay. I'd like to go with, I um, should have brought my glasses. Right. <laughs> oh, okay, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going for option, um, yeah, what's well, option three, actually. What's I'd like to move option three, which is one of the two that you identified before, Sally. You've read me well. Actually, Ian, yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I'll second that. So, but hang on, we have to deal with the first resolution first. Damn, but I'm coming in next. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, and that's just to show that, I guess, that um, that's where John is. But anyway. So you're moving. We now we now have a movement of second of option five. Don't Just to be included in, in now, I no, can no. Actually, yeah. now you can actually yeah. now I can actually do my one. I think. So, oh, so you got in before the other. Yeah, I did. I did. I was racing to get in. I want Just to make that move to see how it would be. Right. We have the resolution on the table. The first part for the options. Can, sorry, can I just ask, as a matter of process? What, what yeah. would be the normal way? Do we start off with option one and get a show of hands and then move to option two? No, until we no, 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 it's still end up with John's been beating the fifth. Well, John only beat the fifth because these two have already moved it, but procedurally we needed to accept it as an option first. So we've yeah. mixed it. Yeah, we've done it. We've done that. 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 Before we did that, these two Stop throwing rabbits in the pen. I love rabbits. <laughs> These two people had said that they moved it and then they said, no, procedurally, we have to make sure that it's done properly. You can't, move it. You can't move it before it's been received and put on, I think. I, so I made the mistake of accepting it before it had been moved as, as yeah, being right. an option. Yeah. Well, apologies for that, people. So it's close to, yeah, that we've included it as the option. So do we now say option one and have a show of hands, option two? No, 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 Yes, absolutely. This one is um, 
actually, I believe, the best option. It came out of the workshop as one of the preferred ones. It proves the mayor signing the document. She doesn't have to. She can take whatever staff she takes on, but that's up to her. It doesn't bind us financially to the declaration. I mean, we are, and my, my thoughts are we're going to do the best we can for climate change and the environment. That's what we're going to do that. But I just don't want that financial hole in front of us that we could very well step into. This could turn out to be binding. So I want it very clear, in, and it is in that resolution, that it is not, we're not going to be bound so by that's it. the cop out to go. Good on you, mate. Cop out. <laughs> Well, I gave up that profession, Gary, but thank you for your input. <laughs> right, now, right, John has ta taken the initiative and I commend them for that. So, um, any further discussion on that? So, my view is uh, where that comes from. But I'm not supporting us directing the mayor to sign anything, whether the mayor wants to or doesn't want to. Because these decisions should be decisions of the council. So this said directs the council to sign it. My view is a little bit different. But to say now this okay. sits with the mayor, so for that reason, yeah, you know, I won't be uh, We're not directing, we're improving who just I, I agree. Yeah. But at the end of the day, yeah. it's semantics. It is totally. So you know, I don't I'm not playing games, so you may cost us a motion. I, well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not supporting three. Any other discussion on the, on the option? Then I'll put option three, which is council approves the BSI and declaration, but makes it very clear that this does not mean that council is adopting the declaration as a statement or binding instrument of council. Mm -hmm. yes, uh, all those in favour, please say aye. 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 So again, yeah. so it's been lost. <laughs> Are there any other motions? I'd like to move option two. <laughs> Seconded. Well, I thought, I thought procedurally we would be we would discuss. He, he, he loses one and he absolutely to go and go. Absolutely. Well, that's just not the way. I'd like to move. No, 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 no. Procedurally, it's correct, Gary. So. Carry on. We like now have a mover. We've got a mover and a seconder for option two that John's just done, which is council approves the mayor signing declaration and continues with council's current climate change commitments and work program. So, moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? There being none, all those in favour, please say aye. 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 Against. So it's lost. Is there another <laughs> option <five? laughs> Well done, Matt. Do you want to have a second I do. Dear. Right. And is there any discussion? Are we going to have an option four before we get five? No. 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 Okay, uh, there'll be no further discussion. All those in favour for option five? Oh, God. <laughs> Against? <laughs> right, it's Thank <laughs> So that now goes out as the option for public consultation. Oh, we have to pass the list on. Sorry, no, so just a before you start getting carried away. Um, could you please just make sure we meet all the decision-making criteria for having chosen that option, which was my concern around the principles and the actions not being explicit in the papers as pertaining to the declaration. That would be my concern. Secondly, secondly, we haven't yet moved um, um, item one at four and five, which is around the four three. One, three, and four, sorry. Yes. One, three, three, and four, which is around receiving the information, finalising communications, and engaging in, of course, oh, Moon, Sally. Rex is going to go first. No, no, wait a minute. Was it something? Uh, I, I just wanted to get clarified. Make sure yes. there's clarity around the table. Uh, 
that you are consulting on all five options, yeah. but your preferred option is option five. Correct. So you are yes. still consulting on all five yes. options. Correct. Very important. Correct. Okay. So that's thanks, Rex. I appreciate that. Right, um, we have a mover and a second for one, three, and four. What's Sally move? Do I have a seconder? Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, John. Um, okay. Hang on. Yeah. I, I have reservations about the communications plan because I think it should be bigger than what it is. But I agree with one and four, but I don't agree with number three. What's your motion? I don't have one. Okay. So we move on. Martin? Um, yes, yeah, so I, uh, having looked through the various options, in the staff report. Um, some of the things that are listed are disadvantages. Um, I actually see as advantages, so I would like the opportunity to let councillors not necessarily say have the final say on the wording of the document, but um, that that comes back before us because at the moment, oh, for sign, yeah, because at the moment it's just saying sign off by the GM strategy government. Whereas I would like to um, see that communication plan before it comes out, because I think we need to list some of the things that in here as disadvantages as advantages. Because one of the ones was um, we had to consult with the with, with the community, and one of the things that's listed as a disadvantage. So um, yeah. Good point. So can we have some clarity around? So basically, we will bring it back to council for final approval before we go out for a public consultation. Anyway. Yep. I'm happy for that to be included in my um, resolution. So, so you would have to change resolution three for sign off by council. Yeah. yeah. For council. No, I have that communicate that's only a communication plan. Yes. It's not the actual document. Well, if we have a document you're going out for. The, the communications plan will have the document attached. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Big pardon. Can I, can I see clarity, Richard? Yeah. Um, because a plan is a plan, which is different to, which then allows you to do what needs to be done. Is this council asking that it approves the document that will be going out, or that it approves the plan to allow the document to be produced? Um, okay. Both. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then that resolution needs to be changed. Because it's not just uh, you're not just resolving to approve the plan, you are then a, a Yep, okay. And Sally is the mover and the seconder are happy with that, John? Yes. Yep, that's yep. Right. oh good. Okay. Right. Now, the only thing that we'll be looking at that stage will be looking at this. Okay. Righto. Everybody happy? Is that it? Are we done? Do we have to vote? I feel on like an auctioneer yeah, going, going. <laughs> like on that. I think, yeah. All right, there'll be no further discussion. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Yes, Gary, thank you very much. Well done, people. And it is now for you to come out of so, um, would you like to break? Ten. 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 What? Ten. 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 Carry on. <laughs> okay, you can handle some more. Okay, thank you, people. Well, Radio 167. So, this is received Drinkwood Standard Outrage Report and dues 1.5 being brought forward. So, we have Andrew. Yes. I just couldn't see any real justification for bringing it forward other than to pander to the well, we're just keeping the program going, at least for a couple of months. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. 
Oh, it's so a timing thing. It's a timing thing. Oh, right. But it's going to have four percent for the annual plan. Is that correct? The, the current annual plan we're working under, it's going to throw four percent on the rates. Yeah. Which is significant. It's just yeah. significant when we're actually um, working hard all the time to keep yeah. our costs down, our rates down. And I, I'm, I'm actually an example on this. I couldn't see the justification um, just to keep the district health board happy. Well, they should understand financial constraints and how tight this stuff is, and to keep the ratepayers um, on board, so to speak. I'm sure they'll be happy for us to defer and not get a four percent rate increase hitting them straight away. Am I off the mark or not? I, I don't see the urgency. If it was, if it was a wastewater plant. Okay. Well, yeah. just to clarify something. Uh, am I wrong? Come on then. We've been we've been misled, I think, in there in terms of four percent figure it might be in terms of the capital budget. Yeah. I it's not in terms of rates. It's just rates. So again, the whole purpose of this paper is to demonstrate that we're spending about thirty-five and a half million dollars on water treatment plants yes, over right. a three-year period, but we're never going to actually be able to break it up into those exact. Yeah. Segments yeah. that you budgeted for, depending on what your tenders come in at. So, what does that four percent relate to? Because it reads like a rating impact. It's just the budget thing. It's so, what we've got this year. Is, I don't know. I've not done the calculation. No. Right. So, it's a four percent on the capital program. That's right. Yeah, but the capital program doesn't immediately impact on rates in that regard because it's about six million dollars. Of capital relates to a one percent rate increase. Okay, I wasn't just up the wrong tree, I was in the wrong forest. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 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 I was following hands all the wrong forest without a front. So so basically it's just a question of phasing of that overall yeah. budget that we've had in the LTP for the drinking water standards. Okay. So it's just bringing it forward a couple of months. And even when you bring a big figure in a couple of months into an annual plan by just moving that money slightly, it has very little impact because yes. yep. the borrowing effect is very small in terms of rates. I can look. Okay, so if that's the case, do I have a mover? I'll move. Tony, Senator Murray, all those in favour? Aye. 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 Against, carried. Thank you, team. Well, I bet you had an old heart pounding there. <laughs> Ed. Ed. Right. The only thing I, you know, take me, I, uh, I'm so, I support this, but um, I thought I'd better say that first. <laughs> um, how's that blind corner just north of Papa Arata coming along? I'll have to check, I'm afraid. Huh? I'll have to check. Um... No, that's okay. It's, yeah. it's an out of out, out of some um, left field question, yeah. but um, you know how, how that stretch of road is from Coromandel up towards that way is pretty challenging. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a one it's one way. I mean, it's it, it's got to be a nightmare of a problem that we're going to That one, if I remember rightly, is currently funded. We're looking at alternative options. It's gone out to tender. But the tender, so the contractor has not been able to source materials for the repair this financial year. Wow. Oh, yeah. Because of uh, yes, it's still yes, a war. Um, and we're anticipating the piles to come in, I think it's July or August, yeah. and restart work there. So, from my point of view, this work has to be done. Oh, yeah. um, the costings are there, and we we'll need to just check during the LTP about the state of the disaster reserve fund and whether we are um, budgeting enough for that. Because this work, just as far as I'm concerned, um, it's a no brainer. We have to do it. Let's get on with it and sort our own. Yeah, yeah, that's that's right. Right. Yeah. Um, that's right. What's a... So, are you moving it, Sarah? Yeah, but Terry's got some Terry. Yeah, just the disaster relief fund. What number is in there now? What, what, what are you we we've taken some out of it. Yeah. How much is it? One point one. One point one. Is that the balance? We've taken four seventy five out. Yeah. Right. Four fifty nine. So it's half. So that's what it's there for. Yeah, Sally's moved it off second. 
Oh, right, yeah, okay, great. Any further questions? I'm happy to move. It's a very good thing. Happy to agree. Happy to agree. Happy to agree. Yeah, okay, right. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Aye.